Beautiful highlights once again. Blessed good morning, people. And uh, this morning, we want to announce that yesterday we received a barrel of supplies from New York. Thanks to our friends in New York City. We did do a fundraising for Miss uh, Delsa Dawson. She's a little bit resident who has been diagnosed with stage 3 cancer. All right, 400 for the, the woman, Miss Augustine. Many are times when we get an inner call to help our fellow human beings, but we come up with excuses why we can't. We say to ourselves, we are not capable. We don't have enough or we don't have the means. But if we will carefully look within ourselves, we will realize where there is a will, there is always a way. This is the story of a Belizean couple changing lives in their community with something as common as a smartphone. We get to know how they've managed to feed and help a lot of people with the use of their smartphones and the motive behind their Facebook page, Ladyville Highlights. It is my hope that this video will inspire us all to help humanity with the little that we have and to support Ladyville Highlights in their quest to change more lives within their community in Belize. This is their story. All right, my name is Albert Magdaleno. I'm 45 years old. I have been the chairman of Ladyville for 2013 to 2016. I was a lay preacher. I was a teacher at the primary school. I taught the uh, primary school for three years or four years. And then I went over to the Belize Postal Service and I'm with them since 2002. With a little break, I think a year and a half, between a year and a half, I had a little break. And um, what I do, I love helping people. I love making people bring that joy on their face to see that somebody who was struggling received the help they need, brings hope. Everybody needs hope. Okay, well, my name is Fiona Willoughby Magdaleno. Um, I, am, I am 37 years old and I have been a public servant for the past 11 years. And throughout that time, I have done humanitarian work as well, but on a small scale. Okay, well, um, I think first of all, it's God who brought us together. Um, I knew Mr. Magdaleno from high school. He was working there and I was attending the high school. He had just finished graduating from the high school. and. Um, for years we haven't seen each other and until one year, 2018, I got transferred to Belize Postal Service and he can tell you the rest of that one. <laughs> well, all the guys were saying that, hey, we got a new administrative officer. Have you seen her? She looked good. She's sexy. She's, uh, she's all that. And I didn't really take it seriously because all the other officers we have were, you know, senior people, they were older. And so to hear to hear that we have a new one, a young one, was kind of like, I don't really believe it. But every day they tell me, hey man, have you seen the new office, the new lady we have? No. And so I said, let me go and see for myself. And when I went and I knock on the door and I saw it was her, my jaw drop like, oh my gosh <laughs> the same girl I used to watch at high school she's grown up big girl you know and so we started speaking after that every day and after that the rest was history it is obvious that Mr. Magdaleno had the desire to impact his community in a positive way his master plan to start a Facebook page called Ladyville Highlights. Now, Ladyville is a town in Belize, but why Ladyville Highlights? Um, 
Leadville Highlights. Everything about Leadville Highlights, I must say, it has to do with God. I was at home, I came back from Los Angeles, I didn't have any job, I was at home and I was going off through Facebook. And all I was seeing is negativity and nudity and violence and there was nothing positive. And so I could have heard as plain as daylight a voice whispered in my ear. Why don't you create a page? You'll name it Ladyville Highlights. You will feature all the poor people who are struggling with their business, who selling tamales, who selling bread, who selling bun selling whatever they're selling give them that highlight feature them so that they can get more customers and they can get more sales you will also do laughter is the best medicine whereby people can be scrolling on their phone and they see something that you know what they were so dumb for the day and they see something that man just lift up your spirits and you laugh when he came back from the u.s in 2017 he started ladyville highlights but it was not so big and um, f well he did those segments of um, the, people the, who the people who inspired us blast from the past Laugh and so far but um, all those segments was before me um, when we got together during that time he then told me that he have a vision to help people and I told him that I am about the same thing just that I don't like to be in front of a camera I prefer to be in the background you know so um, when he told me he said he would start to do a change of compassion story for Ladyville and he started to help which in he, wa he was already doing it like on a small scale I told him I said why don't you just do it countrywide if you're going to do it big, yes. then do it big. I tell her, God will guide us. I tell her, so don't just think about Ladyville because there there is poor people all over the country of Belize, not only in Ladyville. And so he told me, say, you know something? I should take that advice and boom, the next day we got a call from out district. Yeah, the very next the day. The first call from out district. out district. Asking for help and assistance. It has always been just one cell phone, one cell phone, no big lights like you have, no tripod, <laughs> just my hand, my cell phone, and a passion. That's all it took. Cell phone and a passion. And I must say that when that phone goes dead, my iPhone takes it. Yeah, then I jump on her phone. I log in onto her phone. So he kills my phone too. My duration in Belize, I have witnessed Mr. and Mrs. Magdaleno impact numerous Belizean lives with their Facebook posts in a form of comedy, education, and even the raise of funds. Each segment of a post has been given a name. What are these segments and what are the ideas behind them? As a, as a past teacher, I love history. I love history, I love Belizean history. And I think that a lot of Belizean history and uh, photos about historical places in Belize aren't shown much in schools, in primary schools or in high schools. And so what I do in my spare time, I go on the net because what people don't know is that anything you want to know or learn or find or research it's out there because somebody probably took a photo from 1860 load it up onto the net and it stays there for life well i go and i search for them i search for them i search for old videos about belize and i grab it i read up about it i create a post about it and i put it out there I put it out there for, for several reasons. To promote our country Belize, that we have a history. We have a rich, we have a rich history. We have a very interesting history. And that as a people, we have come from way back then to where we are now. And also to educate our young people because my grandmother used to always tell me about the worst hurricane she experienced, which was Hurricane Hattie. Hurricane Hattie. But 
she always talk about hurricane had it this hurricane had it that and so many people lost their lives and the water came that high all i can do then before facebook and before the internet was to use my imagination oh man my poor granny hmm. i wonder where it gone to but then bam came the internet along with the internet came photographs of captured moments of the hurricane took by various people and loaded onto the web and so i go on google and i search hurricane hattie belize and all of these pictures come together and i grab them and i put them together and then i give it my own twist another reason why um we do the blast from the past too is because a lot of our youths don't like to read right that's it that's they that's don't like thing. to read so if you don't like to read but you're into social media you can still get the same thing from social media mm -hmm. once it is positive mm -hmm. and you put it out there it, it is with pictures so it's not just something for you to read it is with pictures and you find that um the youths will grab that and they will look on it a, a story that he put out with a, pi a person who did the first rocket yes the first rocket that was a Belizean person who built the first rocket. Yeah. So a lot of us don't know a this. A lot of people didn't know that. People who inspire us. That's a segment that I love because in this segment, it brings to highlight persons who have came from nothing they worked their way up and made themselves something. Something that another poor young individual can look and say, man, if Mr. So-and-so did it and he didn't have anything, then I can do it too. So that is supposed to inspire hope and to build confidence that if he can do it, then I can do it as well. For example, I have, um, there's a guy in Ladyville, in Ladyville by the name of uh, Mr. Delin. I knew Delin from when he was a kid. All they didn't want to do when he says, what do you want to do when you get big? I want to fly a plane. And he went to school, he graduated from high school, and then he moved on to Sixth Farm, and from Sixth Farm he says, I'm going to pilot school. He went, and today, he's a four-bar pilot for Tropic Air. There's another young man, um, Mr. Hernandez. He also flies for Tropic Air. These are young boys who I saw grow up in Ladyville. But they were determined, they were ambitious, and they studied hard with their parents' support, and they fulfilled their dreams. And so, it is people like these that I, I feature on people who inspire us because they inspire me. And if they can inspire me, I'm sure they can inspire other young people to work hard, study hard, get that education because with that education, it can take you places. With that segment, um, people who inspire us... I, I I could have nothing. I could be very poverty stricken. And once there's no opportunity for me, then I have nowhere to go. But if I am at the bottom of the barrel and I put myself out there, now with Ladyville Highlights, these people can put themselves out mm -hmm. there. I want to do that. And somebody somewhere some part of the globe will see their story mm -hmm. and will reach out and say you know something or to invest in that i want man. to invest in that person mm -hmm. so that's what ladyville highlights does through the people who inspire us there are other inspirational segments on ladyville highlights facebook page like be your own boss where Mr. and Mrs. Maddaleno encourages Belizeans to start their own businesses and advertise it for them as well. However, there is a humanitarian segment, the segment that drew me to their cause, Change the Compassion Story, where Mr. and Mrs. Maddaleno reach out to donors all over the world through their Facebook page to raise funds and substances to support the needy within their community. When you hear change of compassion story, it, it, we, we feature people who are going through certain situations in life. For example, it could be a person who is sick, bedridden. It could be a person who has a sick child, an autistic child who needs assistance. It could be 
a single parent who is going through a rough time at the moment um, it could be anybody that it could be any story that speaks to something that someone is going through um, throughout the time that we have been doing it I think there were two stories that touched me in that um, you have the same Mr. Miller this is a man who is bedridden has two large um, bed sores. He cannot do Besides. anything for himself. I mean, when my husband got to meet him, he had already given up. Mm -hmm. This man haven't had a bath for four, four months. months. He lied there, was just waiting to die. He had given and up. Yes. He had given up, and um, he said that he, on his Facebook, he tried to reach out. Can somebody out there please help me? I need diapers. Can somebody please send me a plate of food? Can somebody please bring me some water? Because he can't move. He's, he has a spinal problem where I think his spine is degenerated and so he's confined to a bed. And before that, he used to be in front of Avostafan sitting in a wheelchair begging for hands out from passerby. But when his back really started bothering him, that's when he got confined to a bed. And so he was on that bed for months and just but Waiting nobody nobody knows Mr. Miller. So when he puts out his post out there asking for help, hey, who are you? Nobody nobody knows. And you. it's so funny because it was a a, a person from in the US from who Texas. reached out back to us to say that this man needs help. Who contact so, me because they see the work that we do on on social media. A lady, Miss Vernon in Texas, I can call her name, but Miss Vernon and she kept harassing me for like Two weeks straight please go and see this man please go and see this man I'm like i don't know this man and so one day something said listen to the lady and go and see the man and when i went and i saw mr miller mr miller he looked down he looked frustrated depressed he looked like he had just given up hope and he said he said mr albert like this is mr albert he said thank god you came he said because I was prepared to lay here and die. Don't eat, don't drink, and just close my eye and hope to just one day die. That was how bad it was. And so I listened to him and I said, Oh my gosh, I should have come here from the time this woman in the States told me to come. I took me two weeks before I decided to pick up this man's cars. And I said, You know, Mr. Miller, I'm going to do something for you, but I need a permission to, to record you. I need a permission to record this so the world can see, so Belize can see, and so Christians all over can see what a man is going through right in this room. Not a big room, a small little room. And I videoed Mr. Miller and he poured out his, he spoke from his heart. Because anybody who saw the video was touched. He spoke from a broken heart. He spoke from a heart that was like, man, I'm about to give up. But hope came in his life that day, you know. And after we did the video with Mr. Miller, a pouring of love came tremendously. And it still gave me comes. Goose, it gave me goosebumps. People still I mean, ask about him. People still total reach out, strangers, people him. who I don't know, but they saw the video. They said, "Man, he reminds me of my dad. I'm sending two hundred to help him. He reminds me of an uncle." And sending you 150. Hakim Shipyard gave him food yes, every day. Yes, Hakim Shipyard in Ladyville. He they provided, they food. pledged to give him food every day. Until, until the, they, you know, COVID. the COVID came down and then the hurricane came and the man was saying business is bad. I really can't do it anymore. I said, don't worry about it. But thank you. Other people reach out and step up to the There plate. were people from New York. There were people from Los Angeles. There were people from Atlanta who sent a regular donation for us to help Mr. Miller and he you could have seen where he put on weight he looked good we even had a barber going and give him a haircut up to now the barber would drop in from and time give him to a, time. Hair, a haircut and so for me personally Mr. Miller stands out as one of the persons who inspires me because it, his compassion story changed the day I videoed him Mr. Miller's story is just one of many, if not hundreds, of compassion stories that has been changed by this dedicated couple with the help of their donors. 
In a country where social support seems non-existent, what are some of the challenges they face and how are they able to motivate themselves to keep changing lives? Challenges are many in that my wife and I, we are regular workers. I'm a postman. I work at the post office. She's a, a finance officer in Wilmapan. But And then the finances that we help people, it's not from us. And so one of the challenges we face is that people have this misguided idea as if though we have the money here. We don't. We don't have it here. We're struggling just like them. We are working people just like you guys out there. We have a job. We go from work 8 to 5. We come home. We have to make tea for, our, for ourselves and our children. And we live a very normal life like everybody else. But what we do is that when you inbox us your story, we take your story, we reshape it. Most of the times what I do, I keep it in its natural form the same way that they send it to me. And I just give it a little edit on the top. And I put it out there. Now when that story goes out there on the worldwide net, there are Belizeans in the US, there are Belizeans in Canada, there are Belizeans in the UK, and there are Belizeans all over. Now, why they give? I don't know why they give. I don't know why they choose to help. These people might have their own personal experience with God, their and their God. They might be going through a spiritual journey whereby God inspires them to help out a particular story. And that's why they give. What people also need to understand too is that we never, ever ask nobody nor direct nobody on who to help all right right babe yeah we i just put it out there and when i look i get an inbox and they tell us which one of the situations mm -hmm. they want to help right and most of these people who are helping are total strangers to us we um, don't we I, I never know them before until when they saw the inbox and then they, they say you know what sir i admire what you're doing and um, I have this on my heart to help my Belizeans back home. And God has impressed it upon my heart to use you as the medium to work through. And so we want to pick you to direct our resources to help back home. That is how we receive barrels of clothing to give away. That is how we receive boxes of medications to give away to, to, to diabetic people. Because barrels of food. I didn't even know that the diabetic medication in Belize is expensive. The strips are expensive yeah. and we get them free sent by people in the States. And I want to stress and I want to beg people to please have patience because while we work and we're trying to also deal with our kids and also deal with their cars, the donors are also people who work mm -hmm. and the they, they donation is from their salaries. Yeah. These people, they aren't rich people, these people take their time and take out from their salaries and we must keep in mind people from abroad pay, pay far more into rent than we do in Belize. So for them to take out from their salaries to send, man come on it has to be volumes. God work. It has it to be God work. Of Plus we have several of our donors who are sickly people. We have one of them who goes three times a week to do dialysis, but mm -hmm. she still finds to donate. Mm -hmm. Another challenge we face is that while we do receive support and donations from abroad, there are people in Belize who also support us. And I must say thanks to you guys, thanks to our local businessmen here in Belize, local businesswomen in Belize, and our regular Jane and John in their homes who see us on the, on the, on the media. And decides and inbox me and tell me, hey, I have a, I have a box of shoes. Can you come for it? But we don't have a vehicle, so when I you am go, the trunk. <laughs> so <laughs> we ride my motorbike and we fly over to your house. And then and I then set it on my leg. Most and of then the time, most of the times, people are like, I I thought you were coming in a vehicle. No, this is a vehicle, a motorbike. Yeah. So the challenge is to to move stuff from point A to point B, it's kind of challenging because we don't have we don't have this, this space to move. And sometimes there are big items that we are 
we receive as donations or we can't bring them unless we have a vehicle. What motivates me is, I think it's people. It's people because I have a empathetic side to me and I know where I came from. I know what I've been through and I know what motivated me. So when I see a person who has a low self-esteem, I see myself when I was a teen. So then if I could pray and move up and get motivated, then that person can be motivated as well. So then it gives me a drive to push that person. Also, my husband, to just watch him and see how happy he gets when, when we're hitting a story and when we're getting help for these people sometimes. It's all 11 in the night and my husband wants us to go to these people's house. Babe, nobody got a people's house after nine. So that just the happiness I see in his face, in his actions, it, it gives me more motivation to say, you know something, you need to continue supporting your husband. For me, it is the idea that if God is in something, it's bound to be successful. And um, the Bible says that if I am lifted up, that if he, Jesus, is lifted up, I will draw all men to me. And so I believe that by lifting up Jesus Christ and lifting up Jehovah God first, then everything will fall right in its place. And what we do is that I love the idea that somebody can be so, so depressed. But when the help comes and I say, this is for you, the emotion yes. and the look that people give, some of them are shocked because they didn't, they asked for help, but they, did, they were dope. But we always deliver. We always come true. I want to give thanks to all our supporters in Belize, throughout Belize, not only Ladyville, but all of Belize, the district's keys, because we have received groceries from the keys from Belizeans, regular Belizeans, who offered to help. We have received finance from regular Belizeans in Belize, who offers to help and donate to somebody's cause. We want to thank the business people who support us and make because what we do is possible because of good, kind hearted, generous people like you guys, especially our friends in the US, in Canada. We will get help from Canada, we receive from UK, we receive from all over the US where Belizeans are located. These good Belizean people make it possible for us to reach out to a needy individual, a struggling family, uh, somebody who is down and out in their luck, down and out, unable to pay their bills. It's because of kind people like you guys who see what's happening on our page, who remembers the struggle that you had while you were in Belize before you went and went and have a better life and God gave you blessings that now you can bless others back home more in need. So we thank you guys because your, your kindness is what makes Leadable Highlights a success. Because we on ourselves, we don't have it. And that's the honest truth, we don't have it. But you guys make it possible for us to help the needy and the suffering. You guys can reach out to our Ladyville Highlights page by sending a message through the messenger. Or you can call my husband at 626-0570 or myself at 623-1373 and then we can talk about what you want to give, how we can get it, what, um, what medium we will use and all those things so that you can help or you can probably call us and ask us how you can help and then there we will discuss how we can get the help from you and what will be the help that we need. And if you have uh, stuff in your homes that your kids have outgrown the clothes, the shoes. We know in the States, they might outgrow their shoes, but it still looks good. Send it, box it in a box, send it to us. We'll find individuals who can do good with those clothing remember, and those shoes. Remember those the footwear. saying, one hey, man's garbage is another man's treasure. <laughs> exactly. 
and there are people who would love and appreciate what you consider yep. garbage. Let's continue to give people hope because the little you give can make a world of a difference in somebody's life. That's it. Well, I just want to say thanks and let us continue to pray. A family that prays together stays together and we're all a family. It doesn't matter where we are, we are all a family. Yeah, Mr. Miller. Thank you very much. She's a six time man. Now I ask me the next year. Thank you very much. I know I've made a lot of videos to show what a paradise Belize is. Yes, Belize is a paradise. But remember, it is only a paradise when you can afford it. And through Ladyville Highlights, I've witnessed how difficult it can get for some people to even afford a regular meal. If you've watched this video to this point, may God bless you. It tells me that humanity is important to you. Please reach out to Mr. and Mrs. Maddalino on their Facebook page, Ladyville Highlights, or contact them on the numbers provided if you are touched to do so. I will leave links in the video description, or you can message me on my Facebook and you will be a blessing. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and may God bless you.